Welcome to the Real Love Foundation Bible Study. If this is your first time listening in, we honor your presence on today. To learn more about our outreach projects and other community activities, please visit us at www.reallovefoundation.com. Today is our fourth annual celebration for Surreal Overby Robinson. We hope that what you hear will not only impact your life, but change the way you see your world. God bless. I am so happy to see all of the faces, the names, everybody that is here. I want to call each one out. I know I can't, but I want you all to know that you are welcome. Hi, Ivan. Hi, my sister-in-law, Lisa. Hello, my sisters. All of our family members that are here are participating. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it this day. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I thank the Lord. I cannot praise him enough for all that he has already done for us. This beautiful day that he has given us and our wonderful, wonderful Zarel Theron Overby Robinson. What a blessing he has been to all of us. And we just thank the Lord for the time that we had with him. We thank the Lord for this time that we are able to come together again and celebrate everything that is the real. Uh, just one little quick note. When we were at church today, one of my church members, uh, we were doing our Black History program. And one of our church members came up to me and she said, every time I hear uh, Martin Luther King's name or part of his speech, I think of your nephew. Jackie had worked so diligently with Zarell, and he uh, delivered Martin Luther King's speech at church. And that was so, a long time ago. But when she said it, it made me think, and I told her, I said, well, we're going to be celebrating him today. But it made me think he was here for a short time, but he affected, he touched so many lives. And the fact that you all are on today celebrating with us, that just says again how much he blessed us all, and we are just so grateful to God for him, for the light that he was, for the joy that we shared with him. And we want everyone that's on today to just enjoy yourself. Know that you are with family. Feel free to say whatever you want to say in terms of um, remembering Zarel, and know that this is just a great joy for us to be able to share this day with you. Welcome to the fourth annual celebration of the life of Zarel Duran Overby Robinson. About to do, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are just so grateful, God, in the name of Jesus. God, everything in our life might not be going exactly the way we would like for it to go, but but God, we just say thank you because you are good. You are still good and you're in control and we trust you with our whole heart. We know that you're working everything together for our good, Lord. And your word says, let everything that has breath give you praise. So today, God, we came to give you praise. We came to bless your name. You gave us breath, and we're going to use that breath, God, to bless your name, to thank you, to glorify you, Father. We choose. We choose. We make a conscious choice. You had to say thank you and to bless your name, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now. I pray, Lord, for every person who has joined in for this time of celebration, this time of, of remembering my son, God. And, and I, just, I just speak a blessing over each one of them, God, in the name of Jesus. They took time out of their busy schedule to be a part of this celebration, God. And that means so much to me. And I just pray that you bless each person exceedingly, abundantly above everything that they could ever ask for or thank God in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that every need that they have will be met, Father, 
in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you not only bless the ones that are on this line, Father, but also bless their families, God, and bless the ones who desire to come but may not have been able to, Father. We just pray a blessing. Let your blessings chase each person down, God, and overtake them. Let their joy be full, Father, in the name of Jesus, and their peace surpass all understanding, God. In the name of Jesus, I call them blessed. I call everyone on the line blessed in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that that let them get uh, uh, just a spiritual blessing just for participating in this today, God. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will have your way. We know that we have some things that, that we uh, want to do on this program, Holy Spirit, but nothing we have to do um, do we put above what you want to do. We surrender this program to you right now, Holy Spirit. Do what you want to do the way you want to do it. You alone be glorified. We honor you and we bless you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. I'll be reading today's devotional from Sarah Young's Jesus Calling. Rest in my presence, allowing me to take charge of this day. Do not bolt into the day like a racehorse suddenly released. Instead, walk purposely with me, letting me direct your course one step at a time. Thank me for each blessing along the way. This brings joy to both you and me. A grateful heart protects you from negative thinking. Thankfulness enables you to see the abundance I shower upon you daily. Your prayers and petitions are winged into heaven's throne room when they are permeated with thanksgiving. In everything give thanks, for this is my will for you. The related scriptures are Colossians 4, 2 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Amen. Hallelujah. All glory and honor on to you on today, Father God. We thank you for the assembly of your sons and daughters, Lord, in the life of the real that we come to celebrate on today, Lord. We pray that um, we not only glorify you um, in this program, God, but may the real continue to live on through us all. Um, so thank you. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I am desperately waiting. To be where you are, I'll cross the hottest desert, I'll travel near or far, for your glory, I will do anything, just to see you. To behold you as my King, Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart cry. I am desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far for your glory. I would do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King for your glory. I will do 
So when we look at these verses, First Thessalonians 5 and 18, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Psalms 103, 1, and 1 through 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Make your request known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And Ephesians 1 and 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. <clears throat> One of the things that that reminds us of is that we have a lot to be thankful for, for our families, friends, extended family, um, for some of the things that we've, we've accumulated, um, life, health, and strength, as they would say back in the day, uh, your relationship with, with God, and that's what you desire, all of those those things we we are thankful for and all of those those things are really supposed to draw us closer to god um, but there can be times when we start to put value on things that are not permanent in our lives and when we do that that value is misplaced you know, there are times when we can put value on the the seen thing versus the unseen thing or value on the the temporary thing versus the permanent thing or value in pleasure and not necessarily joy or maybe even value in the created thing versus the creator And we, when we do that, it's like these protective measures that we, we put in place to protect these things, they don't necessarily match the value. For instance, one of the things that we like to guard are our cars. You know, we'll, you know, we'll wash it, we'll dry it. We'll put rims on it, put new tires on it. We'll even lock it up so much so that, you know, the car can be sitting in our garage. Garage is locked and we'll still lock it up. You know, we don't even necessarily trust our own devices. And don't let anybody, you know, get in your car and they start dropping food in the car. You know, I told my daughter this a little while back. I said, you know, I can't wait until you get older and get your own nice ride. You know, she says she wants this, you know, I think it was like seven to $80,000 ride. Awesome. I said, I can't wait because, you know, when you get me in that car, I'm going to have you to take me to Wendy's and I'm going to order me some nuggets and fries and a fruit punch with ketchup and barbecue sauce. Oh, I, I, I dropped another one. I'm sorry. We like to guard things like that. You know what else we like to guard? We like to guard our looks. I mean, we will spend thousands of dollars to look good. You know, whether that's, you know, time in the gym and eating your fruits and veggies and, and smoothie this and, and green tea that and, and Botox, Lord have mercy, and these ointments and these oils and the bad toupees and, and the anti-aging cream that you put around your neck. No, we'll also go out and get ourselves a new set of teeth. Because God forbid we get old one day. 
Now, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with new set of teeth. I mean, it's not a fact. I remember listening to this this interview with uh, 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 this woman of God, and this lady was asking her. She said, "You know, you look so so good for your age. What is the secret? How do you do it?" And she said something that stuck with me since the day she said it. She said, "You know what? When you do what God tells you to do." He'll keep you looking good. I said, Lord, look, that, that, that is a word. You don't even need another tip outside of that one. I mean, and I, I understand, you know, they say that, you know, uh, 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 you know, black don't crack. And I guess these days it's like good black don't crack. But you know what? You know what's better than good black? Obedient black. See, good black won't crack. But obedient black won't lack. Hallelujah. Boy, I didn't make that thing right. Praise God. I need to be a preacher. Where is my mic? And, and, and listen, you know, be, be, before I go on, let, let's be clear about something. When I say obedient black, I mean an obedient white, obedient Asian. Listen, obedient all love. So maybe instead of us, you know, running straight to the gym to, for that to be like, you know, our first line of defense to looking good, maybe we need to just do what the word of God says to do. I'll move on. Other things that we like to go out are like our wallets and our purses. Because, see, we know how long it took the stuff to get into those those things. Has anybody been to the uh, uh, the DMV lately? Say, I had to go there like a few weeks ago. And I get it. You know, there are times when we don't necessarily have to go in there, but this time I had to go. So I went there. You know, I, I, I looked at my phone because I'm like, all right, fine. I need to find out what time to, you know, they open so I can get there early. I'm planning it out. And when I get there, I'm like 14th or 15th in line. And they're only letting like, you know, maybe five or six people in at a time. So you're waiting. So I get in there, you know, and and and, and, and I give the, the the receptionist my, you know, whatever the documents were. And I'm, I'm sitting down. And next thing you know, she, she starts to cough. And I mean, she's coughing bad, too. And I'm saying to myself, I ain't going nowhere. I mean, this this whole place can be sick because, see, I know. How much time it takes to get up in there and get out. You mean to tell me that if I lose my wallet and, and, and my, my debit card, that, that I'm going to have to actually go inside of the bank and actually fill out a withdrawal slip? I mean, they actually still made those these days? You see how much time these things take? I'm trying to get somewhere. You know what else we got? We got our keys. I can always tell when someone is still at work. You want to know how? Because they keys still sitting on their desk. Because, see, you ain't going nowhere without those. You're not getting in your car. Well, you're not driving it anyway. You're not getting into your house. I guess unless you have, like, a... The, the voice activated thing, praise God. But 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 don't lose your keys and be hoarse on that day because the house is going to be calling the cops on you. It's just like, you know, your keys actually unlock things that only only you can get inside of. This is powerful. I'm trying I'm trying to get somewhere. We'll guard our keys. You know what else we'll guard? We'll guard our luggage. In particularly when you've had your luggage lost or stolen at the airport. If you want to go from bad to worse, have your flight not only delayed, but, so, but when you finally get to your destination, you don't have your luggage. I mean, here you are standing at the carousel, you know, the the, the baggage claim, and, and, and that thing is going around at least 12 times, and you just stand in there because you can just feel something is wrong. And there's always someone that, you know, when you're going through it, boy, there's always someone that, that comes up to you. Well, well, girl, you know, the Bible says, uh-uh, don't, don't talk to me about no Bible. We ain't going to pray. We ain't going to do nothing. What they better do is find my stuff. Because, see, the only reason you're smiling at me is see, you got your bags. Lord have mercy. You got your stuff. Well, I'm just trying to help. No, no, you just glad it's not you. That's what that is. Because, see, the stuff that's in that luggage you know it's hard to replace. You Those things may not even be replaceable. Finally, I don't even want to get into this. We, we, we will guard our phones. I mean, suffice it to say that there are some people in this world who cannot live without their phones. 
I would even think if some people lost their phones that, you know, they may even need counseling. All these things that we tend to guard, they are temporary. And it's like we allow them to have permanent roots in our lives. But there is one thing that we should be mindful to guard. There are a lot of things. There, there are definitely a lot. But there's one thing that I talk about today, and that is the anointing that God has in your life. Now, there may be some people on the line who don't know what I'm talking about. But for the folks who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It's that it's that burden lifting, you know, yoke destroying, mind renewing, tr life transforming power of God that only he gives to you. It's that type of power where, you know, you can speak to somebody, you can speak a hundred words to them, their ears hear 50, and their soulless realm only, only accepts like 10, but those 10 words change their life forever. I'm talking about that power where you can you you've been asked to to pray over someone's marriage and you lay hands on them and not only not only is that marriage restored but the cancer cells that are in both of them are destroyed by your words hallelujah I'm talking about that power where you can be talking to now almost you can you can see the demonic forces in someone's in someone's life and it's like you're staring at Satan and, and he's staring at you back and you're not scared of him because you know that that person needs you more than what, what they're going to give you. And as soon as you finish talking to them, they leave saying, you gave me exactly what I needed. That's the power I'm talking about. I'm talking about that power where you can think a thing and it happens. I'm talking about that power where you walk in the room and everything changes because God is in you. See, sometimes we can kind of think that that gifting and anointing are the same, but they're different. See, a singer who is just gifted and only a gifted, they're trying to move the crowd. But an anointed singer, they're trying to move a mountain. See, a gifted preacher, he's just trying to get applause. But an anointed preacher, he's trying to get a change. A gifted speaker, you know, you know they, they, they want to see who's going to hear them. They're concerned about the numbers. Well, if I don't have two or 300 folks around me, I'm not going to speak. But an anointed speaker, they don't care if it's one or 1,000. They want people to hear God. See, even though this really isn't talked about a lot in the, in the New Testament, it's talked about more kind of in the Old Testament, but it's, it's really lived out throughout the Bible. This anointing originally started with, with um, Aaron and his sons, where God had Moses to, to, to pour this, this oil on top of them, to, to on top of their heads to actually anoint them. And in all actuality, people could not even try to duplicate that oil. Even if they tried to duplicate it, the word says that they would be cut off from his people, which in essence means that, that you would be eternally separated from God, one of the worst places to be. Trying to steal the anointing in essence. You want something that only God has, but you're trying to recreate it. Can I tell you some of the duties that the, the priest had back then? One was to, to keep the, the lamps burning continuously. There was this, this lamp stand that was inside of the, the tabernacle and Aaron and his sons were commanded to keep the lamps burning the entire time. So in essence, as someone who represents Christ, can you be consistent? Can God trust you to be a continual representation of who he is? And can you actually do the work without complaining? Because remember, this was keeping the lamps burning continuously day and night. Also, they were responsible for these offerings. If you go through Leviticus chapter one through chapter seven, you'll see these different, these different types of offerings, the sin, the burnt peace, all of these different things. And at that time, believe me, they had to be not only good listeners, but they, they, they had to have some, some empathy because people were telling them all kinds of things. So in essence, can you be a trusted agent? 
Can you be trusted with information that you probably should not even know and actually still cover somebody else? Or is the news too juicy where it's just it's just got to come out of you? Also, they were responsible for the ureme and the thumeme. So these were these, these gems that were placed uh, in the, the breastplate of the, the hot priest. And in essence, you, you know, it was almost as if they were getting direction. It's not no almost that they were getting direction from God in certain matters. So in essence, the question is, can you, can you go before the Lord so that you can hear him? Can you be trusted to spend time with God? And can you actually accept God's answer, even if it doesn't line up with what you want to hear? There was also, in, in particularly for the for the high priest, it's the Day of Atonement, where he went for God to represent God's people. So, in essence, these uh, the Israelites were made right before God on this day. So for us, can we intercede for someone who hates us? Can you pray for the child of, of someone who despises you? Can you bless someone who has actually done you wrong? Mm. Mm. This is a challenging one. The high priest could not mourn the dead. Now the priest... Uh, they could go near dead bodies, but it was like people who were like uh, close in family, right? But the high priest could not even do that. So in essence, can you minister to someone in their darkest hour? Can you minister to yourself in your darkest hour? Because that's what it may take. We may not have the people around us that we want at times. And are we able to encourage ourselves when we're going through? And finally, they had a zeal for God. In Numbers chapter 25, uh, I'm not going to go through it, but you can read it on your own. In essence, um, the, the Israelites were being dishonorable, very dishonorable. And Aaron's son, Eleazar, um, he stood up for the Lord. So the question is, can you can you cut off these relationships that are not fruitful? You know, can you discern who actually needs to be around you? The reason why I bring all of these things up is because, see, the New Testament tells us that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation. We are those. So we're supposed to be living that out right now. I heard something from one of the mothers, um, Mother Gloria. This is, this has been weeks now, and she says something, and I knew it came from God because it hit me in a certain way. She said, "Gifting will always remain, but the anointing will lift if you're not obedient." In Numbers chapter twenty, and you can go back and read it in your own time. Um, you know, the children of Israel, they had been tripping, you know, for a while. And, and praise God, Moses was doing the best he could. And, 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 and God had told him to take his rod, but speak to this rock to provide water for the Israelites. But he decided to use his rod, his staff to, to hit the rock and water came out. Now, originally, when I was kind of looking at that, I immediately thought, well, he must have hit it because he was upset. And that's not what the word of God says. If you read it, the word of God says, God said, because you did not believe. You did not hallow my name. And because you did that, you won't be able to take the children of Israel into the promised land. But the first, the first person that lost the anointing was Aaron. He didn't even tell Aaron. God didn't even tell Aaron to speak to the rock. But see, Aaron was there too. He was there. He was just as responsible. And because of that, God said to take Aaron up to the mountain 
strip him of his priesthood, in essence, strip him of his anointing, in essence, his anointing had lifted. The children of Israel were blessed, but Aaron lost his anointing. Think about that, that people can be blessed by you and you still end up losing. So the question is, what are we willing to, to do to guard our anointing? You know, will you protect it like you protect your car, you know, keeping it from the from the debris of life? You know, are we willing to guard it like like we guard our looks? You know, are we gonna feed it the right, right thing? You know, the word of God and obedience and just doing the right thing. Thing or, or are we going to feed it gossip and doubt and worry? Are we going to guard it like we guard our wallets and our purses? Knowing that for a lot of us, that anointing took time. Didn't come overnight. Will we protect it like we protect our keys? You know, understanding that that, that certain doors are only unlocked by your anointing. Are we going to protect it that much? Will we guard it like we guard our luggage, knowing that certain things are just irreplaceable? They just are. Will we guard it like our cell phones? Well, you can't live without it. Well, why are, we, why are we going through all of this? Well, I mean, we, we in the New Testament, man. I mean, leave that Old Testament stuff alone. But even in the New Testament, Jesus, he asked a, a simple question. Why are you calling me your Lord? Why are you calling me Lord? But you're not doing what I say. You are living in open disobedience. But you're saying anointing? You know, all of these things that I've talked about in terms of their value. And I guess they have a certain value here on this earth. But I would just say, if we're going to guard something, make sure it has that value that lasts. You know, not something that's going to be so temporary that it can be gone tomorrow. Guard your anointing with your life. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you right now, dear God, for um, just speaking to us today, dear Lord. And we're just praying right now, dear God, that we're going to guard our anointing like better than we guard all of these other things that we tend to put in front of you. Dear Lord, we're going to continue to live for you, to live for your glory, to live for your honor, dear God. We just want to please you. So we thank you right now, dear God. We love you. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. These things we do ask, believe, and receive. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Lord, thank you. Thank you, uh, Deacon Will. Uh, thank you so much for just, first of all, for being willing um, to, to speak to us today and taking time to prepare that word. I mean, I know you had to, to sit before the Lord to get such a powerful, timely word and i and i appreciate your sacrifice and and i just i'm so grateful to god for you and for your wife and allison and for all that you all have meant to me and all of the help all of the help over these past four years that you guys have given to me i do not take it for granted And I'm, I do not take it for granted. And I'm very thankful for, for, for you. I'm very thankful for you. And I'm very thankful for every single one of you, everyone that's on this um, call today that took time out of your schedule. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the love and support that you have given to me. And, um, and at this time, I'm gonna um, allow you to share this time is so special to me because it helps me 
to just keep my son's memory alive. And this is one of the reasons why I started the Real Love Foundation, just so that I could um, keep his spirit alive, his spirit of giving. He loved people. He, um, Deacon Will said something about um, just being able to show uh, the heart of the Father through through love. He didn't word it exactly like that, but he said something when he first started um, ministering, and and that's what I feel like um, Zareel did. That he, I know what he said. He said something about an extension of the Father's heart, and I believe that um, Zareel was an extension of the Father's heart, and that he he didn't just talk about. Um, what people should do. He actually blessed people, whether it was people in his family, whether it was just a stranger. He he just um, he just loved. He just helped people. And so this is a time that I I want to let others share, whether it's a memory of Zareel, um, whether it's a funny story, uh, just to just to feel. You know, once we hear what you say, it, it's just going to remind us of, of my son. And um, I did see um, his sister on the line. So um, I don't know if you wanted to share me. I didn't want to call you out. But if you wanted to share, I just want you to know, you know, thank you. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you for being on here. I know uh, you've been on before and you and um, you've shared and I thank God for you. And um, and so I'm just so grateful that you're on here with us today. And also I saw Cello, um, that's his best friend on and, you know, so, so grateful to God. They were roommates and um, so glad you, you came on to join us. I saw um, Lynn uh, Pickles, one of, um, no, his not one of his favorite teacher and mine as well. And um, in, anybody that wants to um, come up and share, the floor is open. Jackie, this is Edie. Can you hey, hear me? Hey, cousin. Hey, my cousin. How hey, are you? Love. Thank you for coming. Thank um, you for sharing this time with us. Um, I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much. I. I've been listening and reflecting and reflecting um, on grief. You know, I, I recently um, lost Kenny, you know, and um, I now know and feel um, that deep pain. One of the things I wanted to remember about Zarel, one of the things that I've always remembered about Zarel, and unfortunately, it's a sad moment, but it's the moment we buried your father. And one of the lasting images of Zarel was sitting by his gravesite, not wanting to leave. He was one of the last people to leave. And we kind of left him there to reflect and give him his own space and his own time. And he handled that like a trooper he was a little boy you know he handled like that that like a trooper and and um it's one of the most even after he grew into a, a young man i still remember um him sitting there reflecting at his grandfather's uh, grace who he was extremely close to um i wanted to say to you that um um it's, I can't believe it's been four years now. I know that he is in God's hands. I know he is sitting there on the right side of our Father and reaping the benefits of his short but very powerful, very impactful life here on earth. And he's waiting to greet us all. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much, Edie. I remember that as well when he just ran over there, ran to the grave and 
and then you just want to stay there. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Edie. Thank you. Um, hi, Jackie. Hi, family. Um, hey, Sadiqa. That's hey. my niece. That's my niece to anybody that doesn't know. That's my older sister's daughter. So, um, yeah, I too remember that. Um, that's when I realized the real really was an athlete because he ran a long way from that car all the way back to um, back to the uh, church, back to the burial, back to the burial site. But what I wanted to share um, was uh, something I hadn't thought about in a very long time, and that was the real came to. Um, Washington DC for 4-H club and he was staying in Washington DC I think for about a week with the 4-H and uh Jackie had told us that he would be here so I was like oh you know I gotta go and visit my cousin while he's in town I'm like do you want me to bring you anything and he's like just bring me some sodas but um for a young person who has an opportunity to be with their friends and be with their peers and explore and do whatever they want want to do he was very engaged and interested in spending time with family and just sitting and talking with me and um you know when you're around family you don't always have time or opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with people because it's in the midst of a large group and some people have a way of finding an opportunity to make moments or to connect with you and that was one of the gifts that Zareel had. It didn't matter what family event was going on or how many people were around. Zareel always found time to still a couple moments with you and connect with you and see how you were doing or what was going on and share a little joke or just let you know that he knew that you were in the room. And um, that's something that I was thinking about today when I was kind of driving and kind of reflecting on um, you know, a long time ago, because I hadn't thought about that in a long time. And then, um, two, I was going to say, like, Jackie has a lot of nieces and nephews and godchildren and other people that she's adopted. And Zareel has always been so loving and willing to share his mother. Like, he was never, um, at least not with us, you know, the kind of child that, um, that ever that was never willing to share so those were just some thoughts that i had that i wanted to share love you all nice to be be with you all today thank you so much sadiqa and that i mean it's just amazing like when somebody says something it's just so on point from you know both of those comments and i and um i know for myself i learned so much after zareel's transition about what I need to do. In other words, when there's something going on, a lot of times I'm more like um, Martha. I'm busy trying to get stuff done and make sure that everybody has what they need and I'm just doing, doing, doing. And then sometimes I, I don't even embrace the moment or the people because I'm so busy doing for the people that I don't get a chance to enjoy the people or or to connect, as Sadiqa said, with the people. So I thank you for um, that comment. And I definitely um, see that Zareel did that. He always made people feel special and let them know that, you know, uh, connect with them and, and let them know that, you know, he, he felt like they were important and, so thank you. That was a, that was awesome. Anybody else that wants to share can come right up. Hey, Jackie, can you hear me? It's Renelle. Oh, hey, Renelle. This is the mother of um, one Zareel's best friend from um, Duke School. They were at um, uh, Duke School together for several years. Her son is David. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. I wanted to share the story. So when my baby was new at Duke school, you know, I was very protective. And it was so funny because the first day when I, after I dropped him and his brother off, when I came back to pick him up, my son came to the car and he had this little boy 
by his hand and he and it was surreal and he says mama i want you to meet my best friend and and i said your best friend and he said yeah this is the real he's my best friend and i said well did you know him before today and he said no i just met him today but he's my best friend and i said okay so I started talking to Zareel and he was telling me about his mom. And, and I know that you have no doubt of the love that your son had for you because he had some love for his mom and he made it very known. And so he was telling me that you got to meet my mama because I think that you would like her. And I said, you do? He said, yes. David and I was talking and y'all sound like you're, you're a whole lot alike. And I said, okay. And so then, after I met you, just at the school in passing, uh, apparently Zareel had extended an invitation to David to spend the night. And David and his brother had never spent the night with anyone. And so I remember, <laughs> we showed up at the house, and I told you, I said, Jackie, I said, um, I'm here to bring David and Justin. I said, but I just, I don't, I've never had my children to spend a night with anyone before, so I'm not really comfortable. And I said, and so if it's okay, I don't, you know, I don't know who stays in the house. And I remember your response was, honey, me, my son, and Jesus live in this house. And that is all that you have to worry about. And I said, okay, well, if that's okay, do y'all mind if I spend the night too? And you said, sure. And we stayed and you and I set up and that's when I was baking the pecan pies for you. But I wanted to just share that story because your son made my son, both of my sons, feel very welcome on their first day at their new school. And David and Zareel remained friends the entire time. And the last time that I got to see your baby was at his college graduation when we came to celebrate with you guys. And I remember we was walking to the car. He walked us out. And he told us that he loved us and he told he thanked us for coming and he told my son he said don't let it be however long it had been that they had talked he said don't let it be that long again and david said i won't and they said that they loved each other to each other and i just want you to know yes that was your son but we shared we shared your son with you we loved zareel like he was ours and we know that you love all of our children like they were yours. And so as long as you got the memories, your child will never be gone because we're gonna to continue to share his memory with you. Thank you, Renell. I appreciate that. That was um, that's so funny. Yeah, um, Jesus. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to go on a trip to Texas and um, somebody said, are, are you going by yourself? Are you driving down there by yourself? And I said, well, sorta. I said, but I can get four people in my car. So I figured the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit would go with me. <laughs> and so um, exactly. I'm just thankful for, for, you know, Jesus being with me. And, I, and I'm just believing God that, that I'm gonna feel the real presence and Jesus and Holy Spirit and God in my in my car when I'm traveling. So thank you for that and thank you for all the pecan pies and thank you for Oh you're welcome. Let me know just... when you want another one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being such a good friend. Um I mean I'm just grateful to God even though like you know it's still real hard but even just like you know seeing all these people on now and just um and then the memories and even like you know, I'm learning to appreciate things just like how he let you and, and David and Justin come and spend the night over here and us have a good time. So I'm just thankful to God. Anybody else that wants to share? Thank you, Renell. You're welcome. Hi, Jackie. This is Marilyn Slaughter. Can you hear me? I can. Hey, Marilyn, how you doing? Hey, this is my I'm sister good. in the Lord, y'all. We were, we've were we been at church together um, for like 30 years ago, um, 30 years ago, something might've been a little long. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, we met, um, it was miracle life then. And, and, um, but anyway, we're at different churches now, but I thank God for my sister being on the line. Yes. I just wanted to share a story about, um, Zarell when we was leaving church one day, I don't know if you remember, um, Zarell was trying to get you to let him stay off campus. 
and my son uh, went to the same college with him. And you looked at my son and said, you stay on campus, don't you? My son said, no, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I stay off campus, she said. I remember said, that. <laughs> he said, he'll be okay. <laughs> I remember that so well. And also, um, your son was always working in the vineyard, and the Lord had dropped in my spirit. What will we be found doing? Will we be working? Because he surely was working, doing the work of the Lord. He was a great young man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You, I mean, that is so true. Yeah, I was hoping your son was going to help me that day, but he didn't. But uh, <laughs> but it was funny. Yes. You know, this surreal is looking at me like, see? Uh, but uh, but um, like you said, it's real. I mean, it's such, you know, it's like he, he died at age 24 and it's like, when I look at things, just like I was talking about how he connected with people and made people feel special and and um, just so many things that I look at and I and I see that some of those things I don't even do. And I'm and I'm 62, you know, um, I, I and you all will see this when we go to the website. But Zaria wrote, wrote a song to God. Actually, he did more than one song, but it's only one song he, he wrote more than one song to god or about god but only one of them i was able to get um put onto the website and i mean and i think about that thing and i'm like only other person i know i mean i know there's different artists but i'm like that i personally know um i'm like it's real that wrote a song to god and it just reminded me of david um and how David wrote all the Psalms and, and how he, he just danced before the Lord and, and how, you know, he, he wrote songs, love songs to God. And, and I, and I think about, you know, this young man is in college at A&T videoing himself singing a song that he wrote to God. And I'm like, Lord, help me to get that. I, you know, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just thankful that, that uh, he he knew the father. Anybody else have anything you want to share? If I could, Jack, I'd like to say a little something. This is Ron McCoy. Can you hear me? We can. Hi, Elder Ron. Guys, Hi, I Elder did, Elder. I'm trying not to say nothing before everybody. So I'm, a, I'm a, but I got to say that that this is one of my brothers also who over these past four years, um, you know, uh, has just supported me in every way imaginable and i'm so grateful to god for him he even on the um on the morning prayer line on on saturday <laughs> he 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 got on there and and encouraged everybody else he was like um elder jackie is is having this celebration and all y'all need to come and support and i mean he he be looking out uh for for he looks out for me and I'm just so grateful to God for, for you, Ron. And I, I'm so thankful. You are such a blessing to me. Praise God. Can you still hear me? Praise God. Can you hear me, Jackie? We can. We can. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Uh, you know, I, I just want to say I, I met Sorrell. I met your son. Uh, you had been talking about him and, and, and uh, you asked him to come. When we used to have our prayer at church, Early in the morning, you would talk to your son in the coming. I remember he used to come. He used to sit kind of in the back a little bit, and, but he listened to what we were saying, and, and you kept ministering to him and talking to him. And I'll never forget that he even came and presented it to the group itself. So you knew that there was something special about him to be a young man in college. I think he was in college, just graduating from college. He would come with his mother to our meeting. Uh, and you know how boys are when they get up in age, you know, they kind of feel like a man and they don't want to be like under their mother's coattail. But he loved his mother so much that he came when she asked him to come. You could tell, tell that they had a special relationship between the two. And I'm just going to say that relationship between you two, I look at where it's at today. 
You know, he may be gone, but he is not forgotten. Today, you have a foundation. You have a uh, a situation that's going that will con- we will always con- remember to uh, remember his name. And then the things that you are doing in his name, you are going out working with the homeless. You're being like an evangelist in the city of Durham. And all of this, I think, if we look at it, the root of it is started with your son. So I just want to give praise to God, praise to you, what he's doing through you for the gift that he gave your son. You are using your gift to keep him alive in our minds and in our hearts and also to bless other people. What other good thing could we do other than bless people? That's what God wants us to do. The Great Commission to go out and 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 speak to people, uh, bring them into the fold of God, and that's exactly what you are doing now. So I thank you. I thank your son. I thank you for just allowing me to meet your son, spend some time with him, and I thank you for continuing to do what you do to bless others because of the relationship that you have with your son. I thank God for you. I thank God that this mission that you are on will continue to grow. And I hope that your support from others will also continue to grow. God bless you. God bless you. You know, I love you and I'll always continue to love you. And I will always support you because you are on a mission from God. And what other good investment could I have to invest in someone who's on a mission for God? Thank you very much, Jackie. Bye. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Ron. Um, And you have indeed supported me over these past four years, um, financially um, supporting the real love and as well as um, do, you know, doing physical things, you know, um, put the lots on in my house and you come out for the real love uh, outreach when we're at the park. And I just thank God for you and all the ways that you've, you've helped. And, and you're right. Um, you know, it's real. He, he came, he came several times um, when I was ministering at the church and, and he sat out there, you know, and uh, vi- even videoed on my phone for me one time. And, and um, I mean, you know, he's a, he, he's a, he was a young man and some people, some kids his age would have just, you know, not, not wanted to come or not taking the time to come. And so I'm just grateful that, that he did that. And also uh, the message that he ministered, if you haven't gotten a chance to listen to it on the Real Love Foundation, please listen to it because it is so powerful. And it's it's, it's just like I was saying about that song. It was like, wow, this, this little kid is 24 years old and he has this kind of revelation about the Lord. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just that that word was just so powerful to me. And I I listen to the little clips that he has on there sometimes and and it encourages me. And Elder Ron, what you were saying about, you know, the outreach ministry, um, that, you know, it's it's I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna lie, no people say, well, you know, you know, may that grief. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I know it's been almost four years, but it's still hard for me because then, you know, uh, just um, the way that Zaria died and just so suddenly and, you know, not getting a chance to even process, you know, to just talk to him on the phone one minute and then 15 minutes later, somebody's telling me, they can't revive him, you know. He's telling me, "Mama, go to the park and um and run these um drills," you know. Uh, and then the next thing I know, somebody's calling me, telling me that that you know to get to the park. And I, I mean that that still doesn't make sense to me in a natural, and it's still very hard. 
And so um, one of the things that you mentioned about the outreach and, and going and doing things and helping others, that is one of the only things that like has brought me joy since my son transitioned is being able to help other people, to be being able to bless other people. And so I'm thankful that the Lord put it in my spirit to uh, start this foundation in his honor so that we could keep the legacy of giving that, you know, that life that's real demonstrated, um, just being an extension of the Father's love going. So I thank God. Good evening, Real Love family. This is Deacon Nina. Good evening, Elder Jackie. I um, I know I'm going to get an opportunity to speak for a few moments about the, the ministry, but I, I just want to take a moment to speak about um, the relationship, the brief relationship that I had with Zareel and the impact that it had on, on me, um, as well as the people around me. Um, I met Zareel at Eagle Summit. Um, I was trying to remember what year it was. I, I came to North Carolina in 2009, so it had to be between 2009 and 2012, somewhere around that time. Um, but I met him because I was teaching in the youth ministry and I was teaching um, high schoolers. And um, I was in the class teaching one day, um, just in my, in my you know, happy place. Um, and uh, class had been going on for a while and Zareel walked into the room um, late and he walked into the room like the king is here. And all the, the many of the kids around the table just stopped, you know, to, to recognize him and to give give him their focus. And I said to, to the real, excuse me, young man, um, you're looking really sharp today. And um, yeah, I, I feel you, you know, you got that going on. But let me help you with something. If you come to my class again late, you're going to teach the lesson. And he started laughing, right? And that just cracked him up. Um, after I calmed the class down, because he just told my classroom up, right? <laughs> so um, he started laughing and he was like, okay, Miss Nina, okay, Miss Nina. And and uh, a few weeks went by and Zareel showed up late again. I'm like, really? Dude, did, did you think I was playing? Uh, let me, I'm gonna need you to teach this lesson. Um, he, he started laughing. He said, okay, okay. He got up. And when I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> this young man, because see, the first time that first time he came, he didn't know what we were working on. But this this particular week, he knew and he was prepared, and he told that lesson up. When I tell you, he set that word on fire that day, and I looked at him right, and we had, we had interacted a few times for because of youth ministry outings and things of that nature. But when I looked at him, I said, Lord, he's not telling a story. He is sharing who he is as a as a young man that's rooted and grounded in the word of God. <laughs> and it just gave me so much joy. It just, whew, I said, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to. Uh. It gave me so much joy to see a young man that rooted and grounded in the word of God. And I said to him, Zareel, I need to meet your mama. And um, it took about, probably about three years later, and uh, we continued to have interactions at Eagle Summit. Um, but I, I had come over to World Overcomer for an, uh, World Overcomers for an event. And I don't know if you remember this, and I saw Zareel, he came running up, Miss Nina, Miss Nina. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, I'm so glad you're here. I need you to meet my mama. <laughs> you would have thought he was an eight-year-old kid. He was so excited. He was so excited. I want you to meet my mama. And um, I came over and he introduced us. <laughs> I kept saying, you look just like your mama boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And we just hugged. And we loved on each other. And I told him that the energy he had, the zeal that he had, the joy that he had, the humor that he had, don't let anything take that away because he got that from God and he got that from his mother. And um, mm, the day that um, I became aware of, of him transitioning, uh, I think the entire Eagle Summit churches, as well as 
myself, we were just, we just sort of felt like the wind was knocked out of us, all of us. And, and many people came to the park to, to have a memorial. T and I, I couldn't at that time, I just, I didn't want to, you know, um, I, I wasn't ready yet. And I had to sit by myself. And um, it was, it was an impact to, it was an impact to my life to the point where I was like, to the point where I was interested in doing something that exhibited that light that Zareel is, that exhibited that light in the earth. And that, that led to um, participating um, in the ministry. Um, and uh, since I have the mic, I might as well finish this up. Um, when I thought about going, when I thought about you were shared, you had come and shared the ministry. And I'm trying to remember how I actually found out about it. I think it was just because you and I um, were acquainted at World Overcomers and um, somehow I came became aware of it. I'm trying to remember exactly how I, I can. But the point is that when you shared it, I actually got excited. I got excited for a lot of different reasons because I asked God for an opportunity. I asked God specifically for an opportunity to um, to recognize his life, to for an opportunity, like I said, to exhibit what I took away from him, my experience with him, to exhibit that. Um, and so when you when you came and you brought that opportunity to us, I asked God, you know. In, in this particular population, God, I want to be purposeful. I want to, there's some things I want to do and I want to, those things to happen outside of me and my stuff because uh, um, I'm a Martha as well, <laughs> okay? And so, and my sister was the Mary, okay? She could sit and and and, and I'm, a so, I'm so busy trying to run around and get it all together and trying to, you know, make sure everybody's, you know, where they're supposed to be and everything is lined up. And I said, God, you know my character. You know who I am. You know the nature of who Nina is. You made me. Um, but I, in this particular situation, God, I want to, when we have these encounters with um, homeless people, I want it like a firm dignity. You know, I don't want to just go out there like us, you know, this group of Christianese people checking off a box, giving out stuff for Christmas. I want to go out and affirm dignity. Um I want to go out and express empathy. I want to 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 be able I want them to feel like we can relate. We can relate, you know, to what they're going through and who has not been in a hard place. May not be that hard place, but who has not been in a hard place and you know to the point where it was dark and you didn't know how you were going to get out. And I wanted to I asked God specifically to help me to connect when I went out there, I wanted to connect with these people, not just give them some food, you know, one time. I wanted to connect and I wanted a connection because I wanted to convey the love of God. I also wanted to convey the light that I knew is real to be. And God just set some things up and I met people and I connected with people. And they acted, you know, as we were speaking, they were like, are you from this area? I'm like, no, not necessarily. And and I, often I would get what well, I feel like I I know you and I you know that was an opportunity to talk about salvation in Jesus no you might not know me but you know that God is on the inside of me so he set up these opportunities to 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 um to offer salvation he set up these opportunities to express empathy he set up these opportunities to affirm dignity and mm, and I asked God to help me to not just um come out to feed somebody a meal, but to learn what I could learn about his perspective of this of these people. And um what 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 comes comes to mind for me today is that what God wanted me to know was that if we as a people don't care about the poor, the homeless, the sick, the elderly, how can we really understand the grace of God? Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, that would be us, right? So if we had come into that situation, right, and 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 you know, or see people in that situation, and we don't understand that it could be us, then how can we um, soundly talk to talk to these people about who God is? 
We have to understand that if it wasn't for grace, we would be in that particular situation. So separate from grace, had we not made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, like many of them could or could not have done, we could be in that very same place. We could be in that very same place. So this is an opportunity to give God glory for the grace that's on my life that I'm not in this place where they are right here, but I want to meet them right there and tell them, tell them, remind them of the grace of God on their life as well. And this is not where it ends. And so I don't want to go too far. I just, don't, I just wanted to, to share that. I wanted to share that because I watched God do that over and over and over again. And this last time we uh, ministered in the park, um, with the pizza uh, situation and we came, we all came together with another group and God was just doing, it was just layers and layers of blessings on top of blessings. And we got to meet other people and we got to share testimonies and there was connecting. And, and I, when I tell you God was up to something that day, when I, cause there was all kinds of stuff that was going on that were trying to, that was trying to prevent me. And often when we were going out to minister, there were things that were coming up against me to prevent me from getting there. And when that happens, I push even harder. I push even harder. Okay. My car won't start. Let me get an Uber. Let me do, I don't know how I'm going to get back. Let me do what I need to do. Cause I need to get there. Cause the enemy, I need to prove him wrong. And so I want to close with saying, um, as I watched you in that hard place and my heart was broken for you and with you, um, I also watched you when I was in my hard place when I lost my sister. And I don't know if it was the day before or the same day, you were in a car accident. I watched you press to get here, to bring something, to bless my family. When I was in a hard place, I was in a dark place. And when you did that, it spoke to my heart in ways you don't even know. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about any of that. I watched you push past your place and that hard place that you were in to get to me, to bless me. And I couldn't, <laughs> it just reminded me of, again, it was real. It reminded me of the light. It reminded me, God, it was, to, for me, it was God reminded me that I was in the right ministry. <laughs> that I was in the right ministry for so many reasons. So I thank you. I thank you that um, God can take a broken place and a ministry can be birthed out of it. God can take a broken place and a ministry can be birthed out of it. So I thank you for even in your broken place, birthing this ministry. And I thank God for all it's going to do in the kingdom. God bless you. And I love you. I love you more. And um, to God be the glory. Uh, everything you said was just so on point, um, especially about Zareel and, and him coming to places late and walking in with that swag and his teachers on the line. And she was like, Nina nailed him. <laughs> and you did. And, and uh, you know, he, he He's, he's, he was just, he had so much charisma and, um, but respect at the same time for his elders. And, and, um, that, and, and that is what I am, even what you said about the outreach, you know, wanting that to reflect the real. And, and that's why the last time we went, I had tables set up so that we did not just hand them. We give them a lot. And I don't have time to go over everything that, that we uh, give to the homeless, but uh, some other people are on the line and they're going to talk a little bit about that. But we, we bless them with a lot of things, uh, physical things, material things. But it was on my heart that we would not just go and give them things, but that we would sit with them and that we would hear them. So we had four tables set up the last time we were at the park and we had chairs and we got a chance to let them sit and, and just say what it was ever on their heart. And um, it, it, it was awesome. I'm not gonna say much more about that because I want whoever else has a uh, wants to share about Zareel. Um, if anybody else has something you wanna share, I'm gonna let you share that. And then um, once we are done, I'm, I'm, I will have um, some of our members of our outreach uh, 
go right ahead. Whoever's trying to, anybody that's trying to go next, go ahead. Jackie, it's one here. And that's my sister, everybody. That's my oldest sister. I love her so much. Go ahead, sis. I love everybody that truly supports my sister. And um, I wanted to share, come back to deeper. <laughs> I wanted to share this photo of me and Zareel that we took at his um, college graduation party. Oh, we'll just, what I gotta do? Hold on one second. Can oh, can you see this? Can anybody see that? Are we on mute again? It looks a little blear, blurry. And I look like um, the light out behind me. That's what it is. By the way, this is hanging right beside my bed. Let me see. You can't cut the line out. She can't see it. Well, hold, pull it back. Pull it back. Maybe that's what it is. And it's a virtual background on. Wait a minute. Put it in front of the camera. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, mama ain't doing all this stuff. Okay, come on. Pull it back some, Sadiqa. I can't. I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Uh huh. This is right. This is right by my bed. Mm hmm. The only one has a place by my bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was at his college graduation party. Sure you, were at, you were at his high school and you were at the college, and I thank you. Right. And then, my sister, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, and then I remember I came down to visit, and then Jarrell was at the nursing home, and um, I went with you guys over there. Yeah, you were there when he yeah. did that sermon. You sure yeah. were. Mm -hmm. yeah. You recorded it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in awe of that. Yeah, so all I can say is, um, again, I'm glad for all the support that people show you, and they always there for you, Jackie. And I miss the real. I miss that smile. That's why I got it hanging right there by my bed. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's a lot. And um, I'm just glad for all the time that, you know, I was able to share with him at Dad's house and everywhere. So that's good. And where's Mama Ring? I don't see a picture. Jackie? I think uh She's on the she, phone. Yeah. I don't think you can see her, but she's on her she's on by phone. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. I just wanted to share that. Well, thank you, sis. That's a beautiful picture of you and him. And I thank you for always coming down for his high school graduation. Mama. And She's doing now, Jackie. Oh, there's mama. There's mom. There's mom. My daughter. Hi. Love you. Kim, is that Kim? Yeah, that's Kim. Hi, sis. Hi, sis. I saw your auntie at church today. Oh, oh, today? Was it a funeral or something? No, today Sunday. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna let y'all talk about that after. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I'm gonna try to get to the. Um, let me get the last. Um, anybody else want to share about Zaria oh, before, before we love you, sis? Hey, Pam. <laughs> love yeah, you. Bye -bye. All right. Anybody else have anything you want to share about Zaria before we? Well, I have something I want to share. It's it's not so directly about Zarell. It's a, a high level, big picture kind of comment. I'm um, just saying that how um, you know God has a purpose in everything that He does, and He doesn't make any mistakes. And um, uh, just how you know Zarell's time and his work was complete here, even though it was an early age. And I thought about the story in the Bible that was saying, um, why was this man born blind? And they were asking questions and Jesus said it was for the glory of God. And you know, you could ask the same question. Well, why was Zarell's time here so short? Why was he taken out of here? But you know, I, I can see it as, in that way as being for the glory of God. And it's, it's providing strength to even today to to even myself even though he was a young person um and even in his death he brought life to so many because of just in the organs that he gave he um brought life to multiple people by his organs when he passed away and even the skin that they donated from him 
uh, it just it just it makes you almost cry and that that you can't believe that even in his death he was doing so much and it reminds me that um you know it doesn't really matter well I don't say it doesn't matter does it matter if if he left at such an early age if God is done with what he wanted to do through him and if he's gone to a better place and you know it just makes us remember about God's sovereignty and that God has the last say and now that I'm getting older you know Jackie said she was 62 I, I'm not going to bother to tell my age I just say I'm younger than her but I'm still old <laughs> And in aging, you know, you start to see things, like my aunt said, things break and then you try to put them back and tape them together. You know, you deal with, grapple with all these uh, medical issues, sometimes life-threatening. And it's, it's it can be challenging to age and to see these things start to go uh, awry. But God is, is using his situation to help us, to teach us. And, and as a reminder to focus on that, it's, it's all about God's timing. It's not about us sitting there saying, okay, well, I was planning to do this, or I want to do that. It's about God's providence and, and just letting God use us as best he can uh, now while we are here. We've had a lot, some of us have had a lot more years here than Zarel had. But whenever he says that, you know, in his providence, that okay your time is finished for your work here to um be receptive of that and to know that it using Zarel as an example that it might have been short but that was what he did he finished his work and for us you know I, I look back at him and I can say well he was such a special boy I mean he did this and he did that you know he was the one that did this how, how could but it, stepping back at a high level, again, you understand this was for the glory of God and God is still using it. And so um, it's, it's helping me. I thank God for his life and for how God is still using him today. Amen. And that's my sister, Pam, for those of you who don't know. And um totally agree with with all of that Pam. Now we're going to go to um, some of our testimonies from those who help us with the real love outreach and oh one more person Excuse wanted me. to share okay. Yeah. okay Excuse me Mama uh -huh. wanted to tell a little funny story Okay Mama Hey, I, I just wanted to remind, uh, tell a little story that he told me. Uh, he, him and his, and my, and his granddad was buddies against me all the time. But when I tried to correct him uh, a couple of times, he wanted to know how many houses did I have. He was, he was tired of me telling him what to do. He wanted somewhere to go, so I wouldn't do it. <laughs> he wanted to know how many houses I had. <laughs> Amen. I remember that. What my mom, their mic is kind of uh, difficult to hear, but what my mother was saying was that um, sometimes he would stay over her house, uh, at her and my father, and um, stay over there with them. And then um, sometimes my and my mom would be telling him what to do. And then um, when he would come over to my house, to our house, uh, Zareel and I, and uh, when she would come over here, she would my mom would still be telling him what to do. And so he was like, how many houses you got? <laughs> you get to tell me what to do everywhere. <laughs> so that was so funny for us. He wanted to have some place that he can go and, and uh, do what he wanted. But uh, he also knew he was very respectful. And, and he thought of my mom almost like his grandma, almost like his mom, because she took so much time with him. But uh, thank you, Mama. 
uh, does anybody else have anything you want to share before we go to the outreach testimonies? And and his teachers um, put a comment in there about so many women in Zareel's life that, that um, got a chance to uh, impart and speak. I can't into him. And you can come right up, Ms. Lynn, if you want to say anything. Um, this is this was his uh, teacher. I believe it was fifth grade, and she's just such such an awesome person and a wonderful teacher. Might have been fourth. I can't remember. I think it might have been fourth. But anyway, um, did anybody else? Thank you so much for being on today. Also, Lynn, did anybody else have anything you wanted to share? Okay. Well, I thank everyone who, who shared and everything that everyone said was just him exactly. Um, let's see, when I talk, it makes me cry. I, this is um, Lynn saying, uh, she put a, a comment in the chat. I will not talk, it makes me cry. I always love Zareel, fourth grade. I thought it was fourth, uh-huh. But he was always in my heart. And so thank you so much, Lynn. And 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 I I thought I wasn't gonna cry, but I've cried for every single person. So I just tell you. Um, but I feel you because um, you know, it, it because we hear Zareel. I mean, it's like we really, really hear him from every person and we can identify with like, yep, that's him, that's him. Um, so thank you, uh Lynn. Yeah, I was going to say, sorry, I'm a little under the weather right now, um, but I definitely uh, would love to just share. Um, if anything, me and Zareel, we were actually, what we called him Z, we were actually roommates at North Carolina a and um, So my freshman year, we actually met at a new student orientation and whatnot. And then just seeing his swag, just that walking in and just like, who is this guy type thing? Um, we actually kind of almost had that same type of vibe as well, too. And then I don't know how we got paired together. I, I really don't know. I think I was asking around different people. I was like, hey, who are the business-minded individuals? Um, I was like, I'm trying to get some things started and whatnot. And if any of you guys know Z, like, if it's in alignment with whatever is on his mind, like, he is the type he will go all in. And not only will he go all in, but he has so much wisdom and value that would be added into whatever it is that's trying to be done. And so it's just more so coming from his family, uh, the entire family, his mom and his dad's side. I saw it every single time when I would come to the different little family functions and whatnot, and I was just always so appreciative of it. And one of the things that just blew my mind, for those of you guys that really know Z, Z could sing his butt off. So when I actually found out that he could sing, it was just it was just a given. We would both do random things around campus, uh, pop-ups, and just... Um, those different type things at North Carolina a and and he was really, really my brother. I shared this last year um, in preparations, actually this March coming up, um, me and my wife were actually going to be doing our uh, traditional white dress American wedding. Um, Congolese culture, we have a couple different ceremonies, so this one would be the traditional white dress um, wedding. And till this day, without a shadow of doubt in my mind, Z would definitely have been my best man. For the wedding we actually told each other that we'll be each other's best man we told each other hey we're gonna raise our kids together um godfathers all of the above um so me and z we was uh roommates for freshman year all the way till sophomore year and then um during one of the winter breaks we actually had gotten split up um, just because something happened with the room and whatnot so then from then on when we came back i want to say in the spring semester that's when we were displaced in different areas um but we still stay connected all the way through after we both graduated um, and then I was still in Greensboro after I finished um, at a and And there's times, uh, this was when he was at, uh, Miss Jackie, if you remember, this was when he was at uh, the Marriott out here in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. And then even however late his shift would be, he would still come to my place. And we would just talk throughout the entire night, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. And then after a while, I'd be like, bro, let me go get you some pillows and you just crash and everything. And then he would crash and then literally... What would end up happening in the morning, everything would just be laid out so nicely, whether whether he left before me or before I woke up, whatever. Everything would just be made all nice and well, like he wasn't even there. 
And that's just the type of person that Z was. Um, he always, whatever place, whatever whatever spot he laid his foot in, he always made sure it was better than how he got into it or how he found it. And that's just the whole sentiment to his heart, his entire family. Um, I commend each and every one of you guys for everything that you guys have done um, ever since the time of the transition and just really, really keep going as well, too. I know I'm pretty sure we're thinking about him um, throughout as the years continue to go. Um, so thank you so much for that, Miss uh, Miss Jackie, and to all of you guys as well, too. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Cello. Um, you know, I'm just so grateful that God gave him friends like you. And that's something I prayed for, you know, um, while he was in school. And, and they would sing together. I have a video of Cello and Zaria singing at a church together. And another video of them doing, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, a memorial, something. Um, a friend of Cello's had died, died and, and they um, sang, what is it called, Cello? They sang in front of the... Um, school uh, a vigil mm -hmm. a vigil that's what i was trying yeah to and, and um that was my uh that was actually my roommate after z um who he had uh lost his life to uh, gun violence at an off-campus event um at, while at ant so that is two roommates that i lost uh, while i was at ant yeah and Cello is a powerful man of God and ministers the word and sings and just uh, just an awesome person. So thank God for you, Cello. And uh, thank you for spending this time with us. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. So good to hear about memories. Memories. Amen, amen. I thank God for this opportunity to come this afternoon just to share some of the um Things that I have actually seen, not heard, some I've heard, but actually seen in this ministry, the real love ministry. I want to, uh, first of all, thank uh, Deacon Will for that awesome message that he gave on this afternoon, things that we guard, guard. And one thing that we should always guard is our anointing, the anointing that's placed on our lives. So thank you, sir, for reminding us of that on today. We want to congratulate um, Sister Elder Jackie and her team on the fourth anniversary um, annual celebration today. Job well done. I know it's so much more that God has in store for you and your team and everybody that has a heart to work with you in getting this message of good news out to the people. Uh, I've been involved in, in two specific things um, in, your, in the ministry, and that is the Bible study and the um, and feeding the homeless. And I tell you, these two ministries right here, just they go hand in hand, actually, because the Bible study is feeding the spirit man, and then the, the homeless is feed, feeding those natural uh, needs that people have. And so I, I would just so overly excited when Elder Jackie asked me to, and I was very, very busy at the time, but I wanted to help. And she asked, could I come over and pack some bags? And she packed those bags for the, the homeless out on, on the street. And I'll tell you all, the things that this woman of God put in those bags was just overwhelming to me. I, I just never seen so many scarves and hats and gloves and and just taller trees, food, money, uh, coupons. I mean, you name it. And it was in that room. Uh, I know Ben, you probably been to uh, Elder Jacka's home. She has a very large home with the living room and dining room there. And everything was covered. And we went in and worked. And I shared two days with, uh, with her on that project. And I don't regret a minute of it just to see you know, what the Lord is doing through his people, his servants, and how they are so uh, excited about, you know, doing the work of, of the gospel of the Lord. And I'm telling you, uh, Elder Jackie went out a couple times. Well, first time I was there, she, she said, I got to go out and get something she wanted. And she just rushed out of the door and just went on to the store and just got whatever it was. And we were still there working. And it was just an awesome experience for me. 
And, and I think it was Sister Nina was talking about how they went out and actually shared these um, bags with the homeless and did other things, uh, fed them and what have you, um, um, just helping them and providing for them um, and just just remembering, I guess, Proverbs 19 and 7 that says, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. And now you don't want to lend to anybody else but the Lord. Amen. You might lend to other people, but to lend to the Lord, you know that you're not going to lose. Amen. Amen. Because God will repay, pay you for your deeds. And I just want to say uh, one thing, one other thing. When Elder Jackie brought uh, the men, this minister, the real love ministry to our ministry, uh, AWMTT, um, she asked, could she come and show you could come and, and she shared with us. And, and of course, when I heard her vision, her mission, I did, we just tapped right into that. It was no question about it. We tapped right into it. But I had a concern about the, the real love ministry. And I was like, okay, I know Elder Jack is going to school. She is taught. She is retired. Why is she spelling real, R-I-E-L? I said, did, does she not know that real is R-E-A-L? You know, I'm being very practical about it. And uh, when she sent me some more information, she had it spelled the same way. But then she had Zarell's name on there. And I was like, oh, that's where she got the real. And that's why it's spelled like that. And so it kind of hit me. And so I want to say that Zarell has left a legacy that will continue to be in the hearts and the minds of the people forever and ever and ever. This ministry has expanded and it will continue to expand. Amen. As God gives us the, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to do what he has called us to do. I want to leave with you Matthew 25, 34 through 36. And what our working is not in vain. I'll just say that again. Our working in the kingdom is not in vain. Amen. Amen. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. So I just want to leave that with you on this afternoon, that your work, your labor is not in vain. I thank God again for this opportunity, Elder Jackie, and your team. You're doing an awesome job. Just keep up the good work. Amen, because God will reward you for what you do. Amen. God bless you, ma'am. Amen. God bless you, Minister Jita. That was awesome. And Minister Jita. Yes. Yeah. Miss Jackie, you're on me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Maybe the Lord was trying to help me then. I was just um, telling uh, uh, Minister Jeter, thank you. And But I'm going to go ahead and let everybody come up. I won't go in between. So, uh, we'll, Deacon Will, if you will come up, and then uh, Minister Allison, and then um, Ron and Nina, I think she already did hers, and then to Elder Tanita. Um, and Ron, I don't know if you had more um or if you did yours and Gina and then Beyonce sure just um just wanted to say to you <clears throat> Elder Jackie that uh, I, I know a lot of times you say that we are a blessing to you but to be honest with you you are a true blessing to us um so when we go out to um, the outreach um, it actually helps us as well the, the last time that we went out um, I remember the um, the first lady um, that that I was uh, ministering to she did not want prayer and I think that um, depending on who you are that may have uh, discouraged you in some way um but 
we actually began to talk and even though she did not want prayer um just in conversation with her you know i was able to get her to smile i should say it was really god um, just 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 to to have to have that and sometimes you know we think that um people need one thing um and we don't know until we're in the midst of it that they're actually in need of something else and it's good to know that the <clears throat> the outreach can provide so many different opportunities to to minister in different ways um so i know for, for me and my wife it is it has been a true blessing because it's allowed us to see that you know obviously not only could could any of us be in those situations at any point in time but god is, is letting us know that that we can say all day long you know god allow me to be an extension of your love we we can say those things but it's in the doing um and you find that out when you actually start doing some of these things um and obviously everybody won't won't have you know um because 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 life happens right i mean things go on but i just know that for us um we've learned a lot by by being around you by being involved in in the ministry by by ministering to other people and it actually allows you to become believe it or not it actually allows you to grow closer to god because you you get to see god's heart um when you doing those things so just wanted to say to jackie we love you um you know we're going to continue to to support what the ministry because we just believe that that's that's what that's what the lord would would have us to do um you know there are times when i, I call um you know jackie on the phone like on the way home from work because i typically have to do that because our conversations are at least like 45 minutes so I have to call her as soon as I get on the road because I know if I'm I'm even close to the house, then I'll be sitting out there in the car for like however long. But it's like when we when we're talking, I just feel like I get so much. I mean, it it, it doesn't matter when I call. I mean, we'll just we'll just talk, and and I feel like <clears throat> I feel like that when I'm talking to her, I'm actually talking to God. I, I, I know that people may say, well, that doesn't make, no, it, it makes total sense because we're supposed to be his hands and feet here on the earth. Um, so I just want to let you know that, um, Elder Jackie, that we love you. And you know that, um, that we're, we're always going to support you. So. Hallelujah. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I concur. Um, just like what my husband just said, um, Miss Jackie has been beyond a blessing um, to us individually and as a family. Um, and I didn't speak about Zareel. I didn't have the privilege and the blessing to get to meet Zareel. Um, but you know the phrase, um, the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. So when I think of Miss Jackie, I can only imagine how great Zareel was. Um, because if he was anything like her, which I'm going to assume he, he was, um, it would have been amazing to meet him. And within the Real Love um, Foundation, um, the Bible study and the outreach, um, Miss Jackie, I hear her say quite often, I just want to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this earth. I just want to do his will. And some of you may know, but some of you may not know, Miss Jackie just pours and pours her heart, soul, and whole being into this ministry, always thinking about how she can help um, the less fortunate, how she can bless them by not just giving them something, but just impacting them in a way that they will always see Jesus in spite of their circumstances. And, um, even with me going out, initially, I didn't go out with my husband. Um, I consider myself to be an introvert, even though most people say that's not the case. But just being out there, just like my husband said, it it teaches you to be, um, it teaches you to lean 
on to Jesus more. It teaches you uh, for him to allow you to stretch. He stretches you being out there, um, connecting with um, individuals. And like, like Ms. Jackie and Ms. Nina and my husband said, it's the grace and mercy of Jesus that affords us that we're not out there. And so it's just, it just allows us to be more compassionate, more empathetic, more giving, um, because when we do give alms to the poor and the hungry and the widow and the elderly, we are giving to Jesus and he in turn will reward us. Uh, we may not see it on this side, but we will see it. And so this, this ministry has been a blessing in the Bible study, what I've learned thus far. And um, so Miss Jackie, I just wanna say thank you for all that you do, for every prayer that you pray over us and, and individuals on this line and those silent prayers that we met, may never hear. Um, thank you. And as my husband said before, we will always support you in any way that we can. You know, our phone and our texts are always available to you. Um, so thank you. And thank you to your whole family and everyone else who's um, also been a blessing to this ministry and the growth. And we pray that you guys continue to spread the word, that we will be able to impact more lives um, in the city of Durham and beyond. So thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I hope y'all can hear me. Um, so, okay. So I, I'm just honored to be here. Um, Elder Jackie is very dear to me. I didn't get a chance to meet her son, but I can only imagine um, what it's like to be um, a son of Elder Jackie. I can only imagine to be her child. So I know that she put all that I see in her into him and it just takes it farther. And so I just wanted to share and, and be in line with what she asked me to do. I had an opportunity and it was my first time and it was such a blessing. And I know that it was the Lord because I think she sent out a message maybe like the day before and it was the outreach. And I was just so excited and I'll just share why. First of all, because it's Elder Jackie. Well, yeah, because it's Elder Jackie. But the Lord used Elder Jackie um, because I was at a point where um, I was in the middle of consecration, a, a fast that I was doing, not like my usual fast during that time. And um, I was learning about doing the Lord's work, doing a fast. And you all may be aware of this, but I was. And it was um, Isaiah 58. Most people might be aware. But Isaiah 58, I just want to share. In Isaiah 58, it's so awesome. It talks about it, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all of it, but I do want to get down to, uh, let me see here, you know, I apologize, but I, this is why it blessed me. It is it's basically in Isaiah 58, they're talking about a fast. And this is when I learned about verse six, it says, is not this the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of the wicked, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. Verse seven says, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that um, are cast out of thy house when thou seest the naked? And the reason that this was so great to me, she sent me a, a text. She did a group text right at a point where I was saying, Lord, in the middle of this fast, I did not know that I'm supposed to be giving and doing for the poor and let me tell you, I had already gone and tried to find, but I want to make sure that who I'm giving to that is really supporting it. And when she invited me, I called her right away because it was so in line with what God was doing during that time. And when she called, I was like, Elder Jackie, you don't know how God has used you to for me to be a blessing. And not only for me to just give the support, I was able to go and be there with her and do this like right there. And it was such a blessing because God used her to be able to do that. And so we had an opportunity to go out there and be in the park and be a part of Rio's Love, this foundation to share and to just be in it, in the midst of it. And I don't, I don't think I have been saved. I've been saved for years, but I don't think I'll ever be the same because I saw the scripture different. I saw how God will open up doors of opportunity for you to give. And I would say to you all that this is a ministry where you are on the front line. You know, so many times we 
you know, as a body of Christ, as a body of Christ, we do make sure that we give and we know about tithing and all of that. But God is telling us, I found that when we are fasting, that we are supposed to be given to the poor and we are supposed to be out there as his hands and as his feet doing. And this ministry blessed me to be able to do that. All right. Thank you so much. And I want to piggyback off of what Elder Tanita said. Like, yeah, we're, um, we as the body of Christ are called to um, give and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And Jackie, I just want to publicly commend you and say that you have done that. I never got the chance to um, meet Zuriel personally, but I remember like it wasn't even, it couldn't have been a month. Like it was less than a month after his funeral. And um, I saw you in the sanctuary and you were like, praying with people and like exhorting people and I was like wow like this lady like one of the worst things that could happen to a person just happened to her and she's in here encouraging others so that really just encouraged my faith and I'm just like so godly proud of you and like how you've used this situation you know to get better where other people you know without faith or with less faith would have used it you know to become bitter and, you know, all the outreach that you've done with this ministry. I remember um, I was talking to you about um, going to encourage the Jewish um, population when the attack happened at, um, on October 7th. And you were without hesitation to, you know, help me out and like encourage others to do it and to give to um, their, um, their uh, to one of those causes. And I was like, this is great. And it was like, that was two days before your outreach program. And you had stayed up all night and <laughs> putting those bags together. I was like, wow, this lady's really the real deal. So I just want to encourage everybody like on the on the chat tonight. I know a lot of you have given, you know, um, but it's truly good to see good soil. And Jackie's doing really good things with this money, encouraging people being the hands of feet in Jesus. And I want to encourage and invite all of you to do the same. Good evening, everyone. I just want to start off with saying that everyone who spoke before me just gave beautiful insights to the work we did at the park and the community service that we did. Um, you know, this community service event was really different for me. Throughout college, I've done plenty of community service events, giving back to the homeless and stuff through my sorority and through extracurriculars at a and but, um, you know, this just this has brought a different perspective for me. Um, and, you know, as I'm doing my journey with Christ and my walk with Christ as a young person, um, there's a lot of evil in this world and there's a lot of, you know, temptation and stuff in this world. And um, just being surrounded by Elder Jackie and the other ministers and pastors and stuff has really been helpful. Um, and, you know, just being at that park and being able to speak to so many different people from all types of walks of life, whether they were, you know, extreme believers just getting started in their journey with Christ or, you know, didn't, um, or, you know, we encouraged them or gave them hope with their journey of Christ. It was just amazing to talk to everyone. Um, and it just reminded me a lot about contentment and being content where we are. Um, and, you know, God is always giving us what we need and always, you know, aligning our path with his and to just be grateful for everything that we have because there's always someone out there who um, has less than what we have. Um, so, you know, just experiencing all the gift cards, all the money, all the Bibles, the clothes and stuff, the food, and just seeing how grateful everyone was and just being able to bring God into everybody's life um, that day was really just impactful and powerful for me. And I look forward to continue working with the foundation and the ministry and continuing to just serve God um, and find different ways that I can be pur purposeful to the communities um, that we're serving. So thank you, Elder Jackie, um, for helping me with my walk um, and my faith. And I just continue to work with you more. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to thank all of um, the people that uh, shared what we're actually doing out there in the field. We are trying to uh, be the hands and feet of God and to um, just extend the Father's love so that people will not just hear about it, but that they will experience it, you know, that 
Um, yes, we need to spread the gospel and we need to, we really need to be on our job with telling people about the Lord and how much he loves them. But then we need to move um, to not only tell them, but to show them. And, and that is what the Real Love Ministry is trying to do, is to meet those needs. Uh, some of the things that they mentioned, I mean, I'm, I'm, because of the sake of time, I'm not going to go over all of it. But yes, we give everybody, we let if they would like a Bible, we have two different um, Bibles that they can pick from. They pick it the, you know, themselves and whichever um, style or version they like. And they're nice Bibles, you know. Um, and so, and we give them everything we can think of. Underwear, they get to, we don't put it in their book bag. We let them come to a table that has men and women underwear already um, bagged up with the sizes. They tell uh, the person at that station what size they want. And um, we, we give them um, anything you can think of. We give them razors. We give them... Um, you know, we even give the women um, sanitary pads because, you know, the, the people out there are in need of so much. And so we just try to think of whatever it is, whether it's we give them soap, we give them washcloths, we give them deodorant, hats, scarves, uh, gloves, socks, you know, just so much. We give them food, fresh food, uh, fruits and you know, and then we also gave give them gift cards, ten dollar gift card to Walmart, uh, ten dollar gift card to McDonald's, um, cash, uh, uh, three dollars cash for the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Y'all know that. And um, but anyway, we 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 one of the things that the Lord told me when I was asking about what do we put in these bags, what He put in, what He said to me, uh, put in my spirit was, what would you want? I was like, enough said, God. Okay, I'm not giving them no little cheap candy. I'm giving them, uh, you know, Snickers bars. I'm giving them my favorite turtles. We gave them turtles this year. Um, uh, you know, we we just, we want them to feel like how Zareel made people feel special, loved. Um, so we just try to go uh, exceedingly abundantly above. So now I want um will uh, deacon will if you can sh pull up the screen some of you have been saying how can you give how can you be a blessing how can you support this ministry and we put the link into the um into the chat but here it is online and it is um if you go to reallovefoundation.com then um, it will tell you all about the ministry. And some of you uh, were asking about the uh, sermons not that Zareel did. I think I know um, Lynn was asking about that. All of that's here. So if you go to the section right here, the gallery, here's the sermon that he preached. Here's a little uh, commercial where Zareel is uh, admonishing people to tell people about the Lord to witness. Here's the song that he wrote and the song is called uh, Talk About My Savior. And um, then also there is the um, video of different people saying about the impact. And go up to the top. Um, okay, go to the first one. I'm not gonna, just gonna quickly, the home button is here and uh, I think we and it shows, it just tells you about our vision. Slide down a little bit. Hit, hit. Okay. And it tells about our vision, how you can get involved, the mission. If you click these uh, yellow squares, then um, it will show you exactly how you can donate. And go to the next one. Okay. Um, yeah. It, it tells you how you can, how you can support. And also, this is a list of some of the things that we give. And, and it just tells you what your money goes to. You can donate by Cash App. And here's the Cash App. It's a real dollar sign. It's a real was a light. Or you can just click that donate button and it'll take you to PayPal. And, and you can donate that way. Uh, what's the next button up here? Contact. 
about us. Okay, that just tells about, you know, a little bit about how Zareel died and and um, how, like someone mentioned, he's still giving because he he donated his organs and, and just about his life. And then what's the next one? Uh, projects. Okay, and this just shows us uh, that, that that's one of the times that we were going out and we were getting this food from Burger King. And here's some of the things we gave out coats. Um, you know, they could come and pick out the coat that they wanted. And and then we even had a section with clothes. We asked people to donate uh, clothes that are new or gently worn. And there were families because it was it was um, there's two shelters at the park where we go and near the park where we go. And one is for um, people that are single. And then there's another house right beside um, that's a shelter with people that have um, that are families. And so we had, you know, people come out there with their children and they got to pick out clothes for their children. And we gave them toys for their children and everything. What's what's the next? Oh, yeah. And if you go below here, you'll see some testimonies that the, of people um, that are in the Real Love Outreach talking about, you know, what this experience has meant to them, just as they did on here today. And then the next one is... Um, uh, shop and if you want to buy a real love t-shirt and um, you, you can get one there and the next one is scholarships so we gave out we've given out two scholarships and if you go you you can apply by hitting that yellow button and then go down a little bit more and uh, these are our two candidates who, um, well, these are our two recipients who have received scholarships of $500 so far. And then the next one is uh, get involved. And I think we saw that one where it's just showing you ways you can get involved and help and then contributions. So this, we have a, a gold, um, just like the Olympics, and, and we have a silver and a bronze. And so, um, you know, the names are on the walls if you uh, reach a certain level, which you're giving. There's um, one person I have that, Layula Davis, who um, like gives on a regular uh, basis. So. If you want to just set it up where you give, you know, any amount, like monthly, you can partner with us at, at that way, or you can just give a one-time donation or however you want to do it. The next one is just the building fund. I think it's just on both of these. At the top, you will see that the Real Love Foundation is federally approved. We, we have a 501c3, so we are... Um, uh, a tax exempt organization and we do have our 501c3 so your tax your donations are tax deductible um, again you can just give through PayPal or or uh, cash app or uh, you can go to uh, we have an address where you can send it to um, Minister Allison and you heard her uh, tonight she is our treasurer and she is doing an outstanding job. And so if we ever get audited, they will, uh, Allison will have everything written down where she knows where every single penny of that money is going to. So we, we, we are not going to abuse your donations. All right, next one is um, the Light Award. If you know somebody who's being a light in the community, and who's, um, you know, has this same heart that's real had to share and and to give and to support people and let people know the feel the love of God, then you could put their name in and nominate them. And then we're gonna go down some and we're gonna hit a uh, click here to see our light board. So far, we have only recognized one person and that is Elder Ron McCoy. And if you look on there, you can see all the things that he does going to schools and 
and helping out and helping out with our re, um, real love. And what I don't have on there, with, uh, which I'm going to have to get up there, is that um, he has, I know, at least one Purple Heart. It might be two, but we definitely need to get that on there. But um, he he does stuff just with people in the community outside of us. I mean, he just uh, goes to homeless people and helps them and feeds them and just on his own. He has friendships with people where he makes sure that their needs are met. And so he is really a light in the community and, and it goes about like Jesus uh, doing good. And so that's what we're trying to highlight so that we can just uh, encourage others to do the same. And the next one is the Bible study. And so if you, even today's message, which I plan to go back and listen to, and because it was so powerful, it will be posted here. So if you want to join our Bible study, you know, um, this tell, I think we got to get a new link up, but I think um, you can come here or you can contact me and I will send you the link and then go scroll down. Um, will so if you click here we're gonna click and now you'll see all of the previous lessons they're on YouTube and 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 will and his wife Allison they they edit these for us each week and then they post them on YouTube and so um, they do such an awesome job with that so if you ever miss if you want to see the Bible if you can't make Sundays and you want to view them just come here and also, if you want to listen again to today's, give them a minute and they'll have that posted as well. I think I covered everything that I not. Oh, the gallery. Yeah, hit the show, show the gallery. I think we I think we did a, a little. I think I did mention the gallery, but but those who were trying to. okay so if you go here um you can see the sermon that Zareel ministered and the song and then you go down below that and you can just see some pictures of of him that's that's uh, muffin and him at the top his sister that's his dad no this is him standing with his sister and his brother um Muffin and Bryant, me and Bryant, and then, you know, just pictures, pictures of the family, pictures of him when he was little. And so all those things are on the website. My cute little baby. So um, we thank God for all of you coming and sharing with us and spending this time. And, and um, we hope that you can, um, you know, support the work that we're doing so we can keep that, that light shining. And as, as Jesus said, let your light so shine uh, in the world that people may see your good works, what you're doing. And then and that they will, because that's how they give God glory when, when they see and they experience the goodness of the Lord. So we're going to, we're going to keep real love. is going to keep letting our light shine so that God can get the ultimate goal is to point people to Jesus and let them experience the love of God and that he can get some glory. Well, I did want to say this, Nina, um, I wasn't able to, last year when we had this, Brianna, who was a good friend of Zareel's, she raise over $500. And last year, Zareel was turning 27. This year, he would have been 28. So last year, when he uh, would have turned 27, what, she, what Brianna did was she started calling her friends. Actually, I think she sent them a text. And she sent them the cash out. And I'm sharing this because whatever way you want to raise money or give, you know, we would definitely be appreciated. And this could be a good idea for someone. And I'll also send some a text message out. But um, this could be an idea that, that could help you to raise money for the foundation. So what Brianna did was uh, she sent out the cash app and to her friends, um, her family members. And they 
Oh, I, I think she told them to give at least $27 because he was turning 27. And so all of a sudden, and she didn't tell me she was doing this. And all of a sudden the cash app just started, you know, you know, it makes that noise when you get a ching ching, you know, when you get some money and I, and it just started ching, chinging, chinging. I was like, what is, what in the world? And all, all these people, she did it on one day and she was, and I think the next day she did a little more, but, um, everybody kept, and I didn't even know these people, you know, and all I kept hearing was ching, 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 ching. And some people would give more than 27, but I thought that was such an awesome idea that she had just to, you know, she, uh, tell them about what we're doing. I think she told them that he was a good friend of hers and, and about the foundation and all of that. And, and she ended up with over $500 worth of donations within just a two day period. If I'm not mistaken, it was just in two days that of her sending out these text messages. So if that's something you want to do, you could send them out the link to the uh, Real Love Foundation. Um, you could send out the Cash App. You could tell them a little bit about Real Love and your connection to Zareel or your connection to me and um, the work that we're doing in the community. And, and you know, uh, we definitely need those donations so we would appreciate anything no amount is too small and we again bless you did anyone anybody else have anything you want to say before i let um deacon will come up with closing thoughts and also i just want to take this time before i turn it over to him just to say thank you to every single person that took time out you all do not know how much it means to me. I mean, I am just so grateful that you were willing to, you know, just take a minute to join me. I don't care how long you were on. I just thank God that, you know, this is this is a special time for me. And it just means so much that that you all would would come and, and sit with sit with me today, sit with us today and and just remember my son and and just, you know, it, it, it just makes me feel just so blessed and just so grateful. And, and I love all of you. I'm so thankful. I don't know there's people on I didn't call. I see Shelly Brown um, Jones is on here and and uh, Johnson, I mean, and we um, work together at Pearson Town Light, you know, many moons ago, 20 years ago. And um, and she has since moved away from Durham, North, from North Carolina. And so it means, hey, Shelly, you want to say anything? Um, it just means so much to me that all of you go ahead. Go ahead. I hear somebody saying something. I don't hear anybody say anything. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. That's my sister, Joy Show. Yes, that's right. So you sure you finished saying one last thing? Not really, but I told you my brother already told y'all. You know, I'll be, <laughs> I, I'm trying to stop so somebody else can get in. Okay. All right. Well, like she said, I'm her sister Joyce. Um, and I am older than her, but I'm not old. She can be old by herself if she's old. Um, my Zarel was, of course, my nephew. Uh, my husband and both of my sons are on here. Um, but we're not going to, I'm not going to say anything um, about Zarel because we we do have lots and lots of stories we can share. But I just want to say I appreciate everyone that shared um, today. I heard a lot of things. I learned a lot about my nephew that I didn't know. I knew he was a... Um, a great phenomenal kid but i heard some stories that i never heard and i i must admit i shed a few tears when i heard just how he was out there being phenomenal not just with his family but with all the people out there in the world too so thank you all so much like she said i was going to say what she just said that i really appreciate 
everyone that came out to support her. I know we know everybody's lives are busy. We all have other places we could have been, other things we could have been do doing. Um, but I know she really appreciates it. And I'm thanking you also as her sister. I appreciate it because you just really do not know how much it helps when people have support going through these kinds of things. So thank you so much. And um, all of you just be blessed. And I have had the privilege of meeting a few of you. So I know what kind of people you are. You're those great Christian kind of people. And I appreciate you uh, being around her and supporting her. Thank you so much. Before we close out, before you close out, I just want to I just want to thank you, Jack, for being who you are. And someone made a statement today that the nut does not fall forth from the tree. So we look at how great your son is and we look at how great a person you are to bring him into this world and to train him and to continue on with his legacy. Uh, I thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of this. I, my, my call in my life is to serve. You know, once you find out your purpose in life, you, you kind of got to work for it. Since God has allowed me to know what my purpose is, I have to fulfill my purpose. And my purpose is to serve, to serve others, to help others. Uh, and I've always done that. In my previous church, I worked in the homeless ministry. We cooked breakfast for people. And I've always been out on the street uh, communicating with people. And in, even in my neighborhood, I had a group of people that, that were sort of like homeless and they were, you know, they weren't the best of people in the world, but every week I would just go buy them chicken. I would buy them a big box of some stuff on Kentucky Fry and just take it to them and give it to them, you know, because I wanted to show them the love of God. And they used to say, we thank you, Mr. McCoy. But I say, don't thank me. Thank God for uh, allowing, for blessing me to be able to bless you. So it's a, it's a blessing for me and it's a blessing I, I can look at the God's hands on Jackie that allows her to go out and bless other people. But in closing, one of the things I was going to say, and you already had said it, Jackie, is one of the things we need to do, we need to get behind her. We need to support her. We need to support her with our money. We need to support her with our actions. Uh, it is a privilege, and I think it will change everybody's viewpoint of some things in life. If you just come out one time, and serve the homeless and serve some disfortunate, some person who is not as fortunate as you, some person that's not going home to a warm house, some person that can't get up in the middle of the night, fix them a sandwich, just to serve someone else. See the expression on their face for thanking you for doing what you do. I think it'll change your life. So I'm, I'm just putting this before everybody that if you do have an opportunity, I know sometimes our times or very busy and, and and we don't have a lot of free time, but I think sometimes we need to make time for this because uh, we look at Jesus, he fed 5,000. And uh, you know, that should be our mission also to, con and he, it, it, whatever you go to do, he's gonna provide. So I have helped her and it is unreal. Like you saw the pictures of the things that God has provided for her to give to others, you know? And, and she looked back, she said, I don't even know where the money came from. I don't know where the gifts come from, but we do know that God is blessing her to bless others. So I thank you, Jack, for letting me be a part. Hope everybody else get a chance to come out and, and serve and also to bless her and bless the real foundation with your finance. Thank you. And I'm gonna stop too, because I could talk Amen. all. <laughs> Amen, thank you so much. And I just want to say before the next person comes up um, that thank you so much, Elder Ron, um, that the that Zareel's um, father, Pedro uh, Robinson, and had a, had nine sisters and brothers, and so it was ten of them. And so the Robinson family also uh, had a big impact on shaping Zareel. Um, very close, very um, family oriented, always, you know, uh, having gatherings and and um, sharing love. So that, uh, you know, that helped shape him into a person of um, 
always wanting to help other people and and being family oriented and being friendly and and just being that light so i just want to acknowledge that you know uh you know it was the all of the people that have been a part of of um of zaria shaping zaria i see you miss paula were you gonna share yeah auntie aunt, and, and and as the real would say auntie paula i know i know oh my goodness i just want to say that i will continue to pray for you that god will give you the strength the power to do what you're doing in blessing others i remember zurel as a little boy coming to georgia and he was so positive i remember this instant, instant where Joyce and I, your sister, um, we were going somewhere and Zurel, I think might have been pizza we were going to buy and we didn't leave on time. And he said, he said to um, his auntie, are we going to get pizza? Yes or no? <laughs> I was tickled, you know, the, the positiveness he had, but you know, God knows. I, I believe that God knows, but it doesn't take away the pain. But I pray that God may continue to be with you, bless you, and through your ministry, that others will be blessed and may see God in you. I know, and I, can't, I cannot say I understand how you feel because I haven't gone through anything like that. Um, but I know he's gonna give you the strength day by day as time goes on but i love you god bless and i have warm memories of your son thank you amen yeah I, that was also always the funniest story that you know he was like you know okay y'all told me y'all gonna do this but um you know when when are we gonna do it yes are we still going yes or no <laughs> it was so funny uh Hi, Paula. I just wanted to say hi to Paula. <laughs> so, hi. If, no, amen. Amen. This has just done my heart good. You guys have no idea. And I will, I will be going to Texas um, on Tuesday. I decided to travel on Zareel's birthday. And I'm going to um, Rig University. And I'm going to uh, study about the prophetic ministry and so while I'm there I know I'm going to be listening to this video and and just remembering all of the positive comments that were shared and and the word of God that came forth and so uh and again if you all want need to hear it again you can go right to the website so I thank God for you all coming. Y'all are sending me off with a full heart. So I'll be on that road and I'll be thinking about how blessed I am that, you know, I had people that would come and, and help me to just uh, reflect on good times with my baby and how special he was. And so I'm, I'm just so grateful to each one of you. Hey, Jack, it's Marvin. Okay, go hey, ahead. Hey, I'm not going to uh, talk much because I'm at the airport, so there's a lot of noise behind me. Uh, but just wanted to make sure that people know that, uh, you know, we fully support you. We love you and uh, think that what you're doing with the Real Love Foundation is outstanding. It's exactly what Jesus asked us to do. So thank you for doing that. And, um, you know, not many of us after we uh, transition are going to have our names repeated uh, so many times. Uh, it's a truly great man that has his name repeated even after he uh, leaves the scene. And so I uh, thank you for uh, continuing his legacy as well. Amen. Thank you, Marvin. That's my sister Joyce's husband. And and uh, yes, that's exactly what I am, you know, endeavoring to do is to continue the work that Zareel did as I think uh, one of, I think Pam said, Zareel finished his work. And so that's why I made that torch because he's passing the torch on to us to to continue, um, you know, the the being that light, being that light. I didn't want to take up time because I know we've been well spent. I was just feeling all the love and just wanted to send the love to you and your family and to everyone a part of this ministry. 
because you're doing exactly what not only is real, but what Jesus Christ wants us to do, loving our neighbor, loving each other. And so with all the wildness going on in this world, politically and socially, I'm just grateful to know that there are people who are carrying on the Lord's work. So God bless you, my sis, cousin. Amen. Amen. My cousin's um, way out in Utah. And so we thank God for you joining us today. And yes, there are black people in Utah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we thank God for you joining and and that's exactly what what we put on the website that uh Zareel is following the pattern that was laid by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and so um we are going to continue to to follow that example all right so we thank you once again for everybody who came on if anybody wants to share go quick I mean, just come up because I don't know if you if you do or not. Um, but if you unmute, I will know. Or if you say something, if not, Deacon Will is is you. It's on you. Thank you again. Thank you. I love everybody. Thank you all so much for uh, sharing this day with me. Awesome. Just wanted to thank everyone for for coming out. This has always um, been a blessing to to us to be able to celebrate um Zareel, um through through ministry through song uh, through sharing memories um all of these things um sometimes we don't know just what impact this particular um day means but i think as the years go on we'll start to kind of see that you know when when elder jackie put this together um there's a deeper meaning behind it and we know that there are going to be people who are going to be blessed not only now but um generations to come we thank you for listening in today be sure to join us every sunday from 4 to 6 p.m eastern standard time you can visit our website at www.reallovefoundation.com to see how to connect with us. We are looking to change lives all over this world, so we would love to hear praise reports and testimonies to let people know just how good God is. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.